If you're not happy with the steering mechanism on your kayak, you may be able to adapt the design Fred Slavin came up with that I've implemented here and will describe on my Jackson Kuza FD. This is about the tenth video I've made as I struggle to try and find the easiest way to describe the great solution that Fred Slavin, my friend out in California, designed over the last couple of months. And basically what it is, it's a lever action and specifically for the Jackson kayak guys, it eliminates the uh, levers that you got to grab and the iron bars or steel bars that scrape against everything uh, inside your kayak that makes it very hard to move the rudder. With this, I've got 180 degree turn on my rudder with either handle. And it's logical. What Fred's design does is when is it makes it logical in terms of how you're going to turn your kayak. Think of your car. You're grabbing the steering wheel. To turn right, you pull down. To turn left, you pull down. Now, on the left, I pull down and I go left. So it's great. So let me talk through the big picture here, and then I'll do a deep dive on this as well as the rudder control, because that's where it gets a little bit complicated. So the easy part of this is you've got to be able to mount this to the side of your kayak. Now, what Fred recommended was using uh, Max Traxxas, but they're pretty expensive. So I basically just used this T-slot track that I talked about in a different video. I attached the T-slot track with a couple well nuts, and they're on there really tight. I've had this out on the water, and everything is working just fine. Uh, on my kayak, I had to drill a hole for the cables through my seat base. It's not impacting the uh, structure of the base at all, but it goes from here and then back into a hole in the bulkhead. I cut the pipe right here, and it's easy enough for me to reach both pieces and then tape them back together if I ever want to go back. Then using the coat hanger, I ran the cord in through the remaining pipe and that got, gets it back. So the key thing to recognize right away is you're going to make some holes in your kayak to implement this. Okay, then to the track, I've got a couple sets of pulleys here. Uh, Fred's design, I don't remember, I don't think he had this pulley right here, but I needed it to be able to run the cord straight and then back into this where it splits to basically go and get the right grab on the larger pulley. Now one of Fred's big challenges in getting this all to work was to find a cord that had minimal stretch yet a lot of strength. And he ended up, this took months, this, he tried a number of different things. And he finally settled on the one right here and it's going to have a little bit of stretch in it. So what I did is I hung uh, weights to stretch it from the ceiling of my garage. And then once you're, you've got it mounted, it's going to stretch out a little bit as well. Like you can see right here, I've got a little bit of stretch from uh, when I was using it the other day. But all I've got to do is undo this nut right here and pull this whole assembly forward, and that's going to solve the problem. Here's the cord that Fred ended up picking. We actually used a 2,200 pound version doesn't look like that's available right now as I do this video. If you go with the larger version, the 4 millimeter, be sure you get a crimping loop to match. Otherwise, the line won't be able to go through. Although I haven't tested it, I would think that the 1,250 pound version would work as well. The key thing is getting the two cords balanced to make sure that your handle is pretty much straight up and down so you can move it back and forth. Now in terms of the, this pulley and the lever assembly, let's go do a deep dive on that right now. Let's take a look at the steering lever assembly because this is probably the most complex piece of the entire build. It starts with a pulley, an exercise pulley, and I'll put a link in the description. Then get a piece of bar stock, and you can get this in various sizes from Lowe's or Home Depot's, you can probably get three feet for under 10 bucks. In terms of the handle, this is a real fancy one, but this could be as simple as a bolt attached to the bar stock. Then drill a hole to attach the handle. 
drill two holes to attach the pulley to the bar stock with uh, a couple nuts. And then you can either do a complete hole right here or just a hole big enough to fit the bolt that you're going to attach this to the uh, either the max track or the t slot track with. Now one of the decisions you're going to have to make is what size bolt to put through here. This is actually sized for a 3 8 but you'll have to grind off the bolt head to get it into the track. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a 5 16 which has a little bit of slop in it, but I don't think that's going to make any difference. Now Fred cautioned that there's a lot of force put on this, and he recommended using the full 3 8 Well, we'll see how that goes, and I may end up having to, to do that. Now the last thing you're going to need to do is put a couple bolts through here, and you're going to use this to attach the cord to the rear rudder, and that's what's going to control the rudder. He drilled an extra hole here in the back so you could undo one bolt and move it back and forth if you need that to adjust the tension. He also has a few spacers here that's providing a little bit of an offset of the bar stock from the pulley itself. So that's how you create this. Now let's move on to the next part of the build. I need to keep you guys from making a mistake that I made when I did this. I didn't have one of these cords long enough and that's why I had to put this at 180 degrees out from where the two bolts were together when I was showing you how Fred constructed the lever and the pulley assembly. And like an idiot, I just translated that to my the other side. The right way to do it is to have the cord long enough and then you're going to take one of the cords and you're going to go under to the top bolt and then you're going to take the other cold cord and go it's coming this way and you're going to run it around the bottom to the other cord and once you do that you're going to have plenty of ability to move the handles back and forth while maintaining those two bolts right next to each other and that's actually the easiest way to do it in terms of balancing the two cords and making sure that they're the right sizes. So don't cut yourself short like I did on this one and don't translate that mistake to the other side. The most complex part of the build is the rudder assembly and basically all it is is a coupler for inch and a half PVC that then fits over the top of the rudder cap connected with a pin that goes through the PV, the coupler, through the rudder cap, and then out the other side to provide the bite that's going to allow this to turn. And I'll, I'll show you how to wrap the uh, ropes here in a minute. Then a difference between my implementation and Fred's is that his had a friction free mount uh, for his rudder. I don't need that. And so all I did was take a piece of deck strapping and bend it and then I attached it uh, with a T-bolt that's loose because all I want this to do is hold this in place with a washer and then through here and screwed on the bottom. I'll show you that. The T-bolt just fits right through the hole I drilled in the strap in through the top of the cap I've got on the coupler and then I used a washer and a lock nut underneath but I did not screw it all the way down because I want this to be loose so it can rotate. Then to make sure the HTP on my kayak doesn't crack, I braced it above and below with two one quarter inch chunks of PVC. Now the lines run from here back through these pulleys into the, the back. Oh, and I need to fix it. Oh, there we go. And that keeps it from rubbing on the back of my hatch right here to reduce the uh, friction a little bit. And it works great. Let me, sh let me show you what the rudder does with one handle. I'm going to move the lever. And you can see I get a full one 90 degree move when I pull it back. And I get another full 90 degree move 
when I move it over to the other side. So I've maximized my ability to steer the boat and it's smooth. Let's take a little bit deeper look at how you're going to wrap these two cords. So I've got them both through the hole and you'll do two holes on one side and then two holes on the other side for the basically two holes go with each side of your kayak. Then you tie off the knot on the bottom and then you're going to wrap one cord around this way and the other cord around the opposite way. And that way when the control works the rudder is going to turn properly. So be sure you don't make the mistake like I did the first time I did this and ended up wrapping both of the cords the same way and had to take it apart and redo it. So hope that clarifies how this section is set up. Okay, now here's an important thing. You're going to put this PVC connector on top of your rudder control and go ahead and you're going to connect it. But do not use a screw that does not exactly fit through the rudder cap because you see how that's going to wobble? That's going to make the rudder loose. So you need to use a one quarter inch, that's what this hole is, a one quarter inch steel rod or get a one quarter inch screw and cut it off because you also want the two ends to be exactly equal with the side of the, of the connector. If any of these stick out significantly, they're going to catch on the cord. One other tip is that when you're bending the strapping, use a vise because then you can get a nice good right angle, bang it with a hammer and get it all smoothed out. Let me show you a little bit of the on the water footage. This really works well. Now that I'm out here putting some stress on the rudder, it's clear I've got to tighten up my cables a little bit, but this is so much easier to steer than the stock steering mechanism. The hard part is getting used to doing it the right way. To pull back to turn right and pull back to turn left. So Dick and I have been out here for about an hour. We put in probably three miles and the biggest thing I need to do is make sure that my cables are a little bit tighter. The steering worked great but since my cables were loose as you can see right here that they tended to jump off the pulleys. So once I get that fixed, I think this is going to be a pretty good solution. You can see I've got this much slop in the line here that i got to get out to make it nice and tight. And then that will keep all these cords on the tracks. So I'll do that when I get home. Just a matter of pulling it through, pulling it back, retying the knot. Your first instinct on trying to thread the cord through these ferrules would be to stick, stick it in, pull it through, and then work it back. That's the wrong way to do it. It's just very, very difficult. So what I ended up doing is you fold it over like this, and then you get something nice and flat like this little grabber right here, and you use that to stuff this through the slot in the ferrule. And once you get it down to this side, you can grab a little pick, put it in, and then pull it back through. It's still a pain in the butt to do it. That's why I'm not going to actually do it. But you can see that with this paddle shape here, you could use a flat tip screwdriver as well. It can stuff that in there pretty good. I've got everything all tightened up. And as this wears in a little bit, all I need to do is undo the bolt here holding the handle and I can pull this forward to continue to tighten the rope. What a fantastic build. I'm, I'm so grateful to Fred for coming up with this idea and then having the patience to not only do it for himself but to mentor me through the same process on my kayak. I know I'm going to have a great fishing season with great controls and an improved turning radius on this kayak as a result of his solution. Thanks, Fred. Comments? Throw it down below. Thanks.